Hi guys, Aceface back with another video for you today, and we're going to be talking Tyranids again. Wow, what a surprise, right? Um, so thank you for joining us, and hopefully this will be really useful. This is this is a video that's very much geared to uh, you beginner players, but you never know. There might be some other people out there that take some tips from it as well, so hopefully it's helpful for all you guys. If you are just stopping by the video, then please do give us a, a subscribe button. Let us know that you like the video. It really helps us out tons as we fast approach that magical, mystical 10,000 subscriber mark. Uh, and you guys are doing an amazing job at jumping on and getting us there really, really quick. So we cannot thank you enough. Uh, and do hit that like button as well. It helps us out tons and let us know that you like the videos. Um, Check us a comment down below and let us know what you think. If we're missing a trick, then again, we want to hear it. Uh, and all the links and descriptions and cool stuff for all the other amazing stuff is all down below. So let's jump in. Now, what I want to talk today is I want to talk about starting your Tyranid army. Now, I'll put a link down below to the video that I put out a while ago. That was in the midst of when we did not know what was going on with Night Edition, and it was some tips and tricks and just kind of getting your mind in gear for what I would do if I was starting off Tyranids at that point. Now, obviously, we know a lot more now, but predominantly the information and the advice stays the same. The best thing to do with starting a new army is do something that you love, right? Take on board the models that you like, the the fluff you like, the play style potentially of of our of, of units when you've read up around what they how they what they kind of do. Don't get too wrapped up with what's good, what's bad, because things are always in a continuous state of flux. Things will always change and uh, things that are bad will become good. Things that are good will become bad. That is the nature of 40k. So do not get hung up on that side of it. But now we know a little bit more. Um, and a few people were like, well, there's not enough content in this video. So let me try and kind of break it down and talk to you about how, you know, if you want to be uh, not competitive, but if you want to have a bit of a, a bit of a chance to do OK, to start off with on the board um, and your friends are all taking potentially Space Marines. They're not good players because they're just starting up as well, uh, but they've got Space Marines or they've got other fairly competitive armies. And you're thinking, you know, I want to take Tyranids, so what am I going to do? So now... When you look at the start collecting box, it doesn't necessarily give you what I would call competitive units at the moment. So look, if you just want to go jump on the board and you want to be really strong, you don't particularly you want to go for those cool looking models, which is the Gene Steelers, the Broodlord and the Morlock Stroke uh, Trigon, which is one of the most amazing kits that Games Workshop produce. So buy it anyway. But anyway, what where would I start? So where would I start? I would start with some a box of Tyranid Warriors. Um, a box of Tyranid Warriors gives you an option to, but to to build a Prime in there, which is cool. You can quite easily convert multiple Primes from there as good, uh, but also that Prime can quite easily then look like a Tyranid Warrior and you've got three Warriors. You've got a troop choice there. Warriors are not too bad now, um, so that's a good start. Then I would buy myself at least three boxes of Termagants. Right, now what we've straight away got from this is we start to get Rippers. We've got Rippers on those... On those um, uh, on those sprues so you can start to build yourself rippers there and you've probably then between those boxes got yourself to get probably a good couple of units of rippers if not more uh, and obviously with those rippers i'd always try and just you know use some use some uh some rocks some pebbles whatever it is stock stock up those uh bases so you can make use of only having like a couple of rippers on each uh, to make good use of your money and make it go further. But then when you've got a few units of Rippers, you've got either a big juicy unit of Termagants or three little units of Termagants. Uh, you've got some Warriors there with some Primes. You've got, you kind of, you've got then your Troops Choice additional. You've got your starting point ready, which is going to fill in whatever kind of um, detachment you go for. That gives you just a great start. It gives you a great starting point. So then what I would go for is I would look at the Zoanthrope kit and I would probably get myself a couple of boxes of that. Now, they do also work as the uh, Venomthropes. But personally, I don't think Venomthropes are the way to go. I think you do use them as Zoanthropes and then you've got some very, very cool bits in there. But what I would do, and here's the here's the tip, here's the, I suppose, the where I'm trying to break this down and be good value for you guys, is I would run a unit of five Zoanthropes. Uh, it's a really, really good unit. It will just sit and provide that 
vital control role as you get a bit as you become a better player they're a really really good unit but then what it means is then the um the other the remaining model that you've got three you make that guy a neurothrope and a neurothrope is one of the best units in the tuna codex and that'd be a great hq for you so then you've got great elite section you know and actually you've got another hq in there as well so you've got a and prime you've now got a neurothrope so you're doing pretty well there this is when at that point you can start to get a bit spicy and you can start to look at where you want to start to to tailor your army gives you variety and options you can now decide whether you want to go more hoardy more monstery or a combination of the two, you can decide where you want to go mid bugs, big bugs, whatever. So that's your kind of that's your starting point. And that the realistically is probably gonna cost you maybe maybe just shy of a hundred pounds stroke, maybe um I don't know, hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Maybe that's conservative, but I think if you shop around probably get it for about that so that gives you a starting point and actually that's a playable army not good don't take it but that will give you a really good framework for them building on the bits that you like and i would really suggest you at that point you have to think what you like but here's some good options for you to start to think about uh, to build on that army so hive guard probably the best unit we've got you can get a couple of boxes of those that will give you six hive guard um might be a way to go with that um i would suggest obviously build them all with um the impaler cannons um you know unless you're playing super competitive you know if you want to use them as shot cannons just use them as shot cannons but build them as uh, impaler cannons that's your trick uh the tyrant guard i think there's play there but the Hive Guard is just going to be so good for you and they're going to give you the heavy hitting part of your army that you need that you don't currently have from the other factors. So the Hive Guard definitely are a, are a good next point. A couple of boxes of those is a good start. If you can only stretch to one, one, three Hive Guard is still a good little starting point as well. Nothing wrong with that at all. And then I'd start looking at big bugs. And for big bugs, for me, there's two standout choices really here. We've got the uh, Exocrime. And we've got the Hive Tyrant uh, will be my next kind of purchases for you. Um, so the Hive Tyrant is probably a really good option to go for. It gives you quite a lot of versatility in different ways to build him. Um, wings are still great. Shooty is still great. Combat is not that's not that great, but you can take him on the ground as well. So you've got options there. Um, he's probably the biggest candidate for magnetizing. So I haven't really got one for the Hive Tyrant, particularly I don't think in the archive at the moment. But um, look up how to magnetize Hive Tyrant. Give yourself options because he will be a useful unit for you and will last you through do lots of different army builds. So he's a very good option. But if you'd rather go for a big heavy hitter, let's go for the exocrine and the exocrine will provide you with some more super strong shooting again unfortunately the um i can't even remember what his name is the other guy the other kit begins with an m can't remember what it is uh really not that great unfortunately so you can do a simple magnetization again on the head piece um so again that's an option to go for but i would probably just go for your exocrine there that will do the trick really, really nicely for you. So that gives you that kind of way. What's your next option to go for? You know, we're now stretching up to, we're probably closing in on at least 200 pounds, uh, maybe closer to 250. Um, so, you know, you're gonna start spending that sort of money. Your next kind of options, you probably wanna look at a Tyrannifex or Turbigant. Again, you can magnetize that guy. It's a bit more of a tricky job, but a Tyrannifex is a pretty nice option to go for there in your army. Um, and then that will give you some more big bugs to play with. Um, and then after that, we're now looking at probably an army that is closing in on about 1700, 1750 points. So you've got a really, really good kind of strong backbone of your army. And then for there, it really is up to you what way, what direction you kind of go for. Do you want to go for more zone tropes to kind of block out that? Do you want to start going for more troops? Try and get yourself more rippers. Now, I love the, the Forge World rippers. Uh, and maybe it's an opportunity now to kind of spend a little bit more, more money and get yourself some ripper spawns from Forge World. They're beautiful models. They look great and rippers are so strong. Maybe this is time you get yourself a second Hive Tyrant. That's a potential.
potential option. Um, that these are good, good kind of choices. You can't really go wrong with them. Or maybe you want to start now building yourself a juicier unit of warriors, and you get yourself maybe a one or two more boxes of your warriors uh, that will give you some extra options there. So that's kind of your next stage. But hopefully, if you kind of follow that roadmap, you've got to get yourself an army that actually will do quite well on the board. Um, it's got options, it's got some shooting. Um, it doesn't have a lot of combat because unfortunately, as I've said in multiple videos, we're still not amazing at combat um, and we don't really currently stand up, stand out in combat. Uh, I can do more videos on that in the future, uh, but we don't really hold up particularly well in that phase. So, you know, hopefully the Codex will sort that out in the future. But if you want those type of armies, then just be prepared that you might have a bit of an uphill slog um, competing but there's definitely ways to build combat as well so hopefully we're at 10 minutes now guys so i'm gonna because uh, i could ramble on for ages about building an army but ultimately do follow those initial steps that I, I said in the in the last video because ultimately the love of the hobby and the love of your army will be the thing that continues to keep you interested in the army no matter whether they're good bad or ugly so don't get too wrapped up on the competitive and what's going to be good but if you follow that roadmap that will give you a good starting point for an army that will do well on the table uh, and will hopefully stand up pretty well against other new players. Um, and then you, from there, you can really adapt your play style. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully this video has been useful for all you new players and maybe up players that are kind of coming back into the hobby as well. So, But if you've got tips for new players, stuck, stick them down in the comments below because I know it, people will appreciate it. But again, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.